Okay, so good uh, evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us to uh, our marketing uh, working group at CCS Front. Uh, we're very glad today uh, to uh, welcome uh, Patrice and uh, Stephen for uh, telling us about uh, the China first. So, uh, Patrice, uh, well, thank you. Uh, floor is yours. Great. Thank you very much, Alex, and uh, very glad to be here with you. It's been a while that I was not uh, coming here, so. Uh, Happy to be here today for what will be the last event, I think, of the year. So we're happy to conclude actually a very uh, nice uh, season of uh, events. And also, I think this is the first time that we are bringing the metaverse topic at the French Chamber of Commerce. And uh, it was a topic of the year. So I think it was really about time that we could gather together and explore you know, what the metaverse has to offer. Uh, today is a special day as well because uh, I think we have a lot of people online uh, that are connecting. So, uh, so welcome everybody for, for you connecting online uh, and uh, welcome to the person who came to the chamber um, and happy to start this, uh, this session together. So um, today we are going to explore um, what we call at Fabian Novel the Chinaverse, uh, which is uh, the metaverse you know, evolution, but also in the China context. Um, and so I will give you a first introduction about metaverse in general and uh, Chinaverse more specifically, and uh, also share with you some uh, application cases. Uh, and also we had the great pleasure to uh, bring uh, what I call you know, uh, companies who are the builders of you know, all this uh, infrastructure and uh, virtual world. Uh, so Stephen uh, Zhang joining us, a uh, very good friend of uh, Faber Novel, uh, and uh, building uh, uh, AI and uh, AR uh, engines uh, that uh, bring us to 3D world. Uh, but you will know more uh, when, when Stephen will, uh, will present. So I will just um, start so with um, a little introduction. Um, and uh, always I like to start with a bit of uh, history uh, because we feel that it's a very new topic, but actually it's not that new. Uh, and at least uh, it's not very new in our head. Um, so Metaverse before being something that we could explore, uh, that uh, we could build, it was just an idea, like many, many things that you know, we, we try now that we use today. They're starting by being just an idea. And I wanted to share with you actually the first book that coined the term metaverse and uh, explain what metaverse was. And, uh, so it was in 1992. Uh, I had the chance to read that book uh, a few years after uh, it was published. Um, and it was very interesting. Uh, it's still very interesting to read now. Um, without uh, unveiling the, 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 the story. Uh, so you have so this metaverse environment where people regroup and there is a drug uh, that is distributed in this metaverse, which is actually a virus. <laughs> uh, so you see it's very, very uh, close to what we live now. So it's a virus that's spread and people, the avatar in the metaverse get the virus and the users of the avatar, so the people behind the, 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 the avatar, get sick because of this in, in the real life. So that's the plot of the, of the story, uh, but I let you read it. I think there's a lot of things that we understand only from reading that book. Uh, so it's all starting with an ID, uh, but then a lot of things happen, and again, it's not a new... Uh, it's not a new wave. I think, uh, personally, I had the chance to uh, experience probably like three waves uh, so after I read that book, I think it was around uh, 1996 uh, when I had the chance to read it, um, I actually had the chance to uh, leave a first wave in 1999 when I was starting my first company because I had to build a, a metaverse environment uh, to, um, to regroup companies and to create a kind of forum online. Then later in 2003, you might remember uh, Second Life, which was also a very big metaverse wave. Like everybody was crazy about it. A lot of companies were creating uh, environment and stories. And I was working in a bank at that time. And we um, also uh, created a lot of projects uh, as brands are doing now. But at the time, it was in 2003. Uh, and 2007, so this is where I, I came to China and I had the chance to meet a company called uh, Hypey High which I believe is one of the very 
uh, early stage Chinese company to uh, develop Metaverse, a full immersive uh, environment, real time and online. Um, and another element, which I think is uh, good to remember, uh, because uh, associated to metaverse are NFT and you know uh, Bitcoin and um, blockchain, uh, and you might remember that China in 2015 was the biggest uh, Bitcoin market in the world in terms of mining and marketplace. Uh, and I had a chance to meet this company BTCC, uh, which was the largest in the world in China. Uh, so it's not very new. A lot of things um, happen already. Um, but back to our topic of metaverse and what it is now. Um, a lot of things are said about metaverse, uh, but there is probably like two key directions uh, in terms of evolution. Um, one is probably the one that is the most, uh, let's say, uh, understood and uh, well-known, which is having a full immersive world, uh, which is uh, persistent online, uh, real time and where you have avatars that uh, represent yourself and you can navigate um, in this, uh, in this uh, social world. Um, and probably the best way to imagine that is to uh, look at the movie, you know, Ready Player One, uh, it is a catch up from, the, from this movie, where people are actually immersed into it, but they are close from the normal world, right? There's a kind of separation. That's the first, let's say, direction where you know, metaverse is going. Um, but there is another one, and the other one is uh, something which is um, how the 3D environment and how you know, um, uh, those virtual worlds are actually coming into the real world. So you see here an image of, uh, I think it's Times Square in New York, and you already see in the real environment a lot of screens that are most of them connected online, but they're still on screens. So the idea of metaverse going to the real world is what we call hyper-reality. Uh, and so you see here, so that's the same uh, as, um, um, as Times Square, but it's not only in two screens on the walls, they are actually eventually on your phone, on your glasses, is overlaying your reality. It's uh, enriching and complementing or augmenting the reality. So this is what we call the hyper-reality. And this is in a way the metaverse invading, you know, or the day-to-day -day world and, um, for, for recreational or entertainment purpose, but also it can be for you know, a very practical user case. Uh, if you think about um, flying simulation, like, a, um, like to become a, a pilot, it's the same. You have actually reality coming uh, into um, the, the, the reality of the pilot to one day being able to, to fly a, a real plane. So that's the two key directions. They are not mutually exclusive. Uh, one is more derived from um, um, games, and uh, the other one is uh, maybe probably more new and relying on other technologies, including AR, uh, which is one of the key uh, specialty of uh, KiwiSense. So uh, we'll explore a bit of hyper-reality together tonight. Um, another note about this is uh, when we look at how China is actually looking into metaverse, Clearly, um, the government uh, is uh, pushing into hyper-reality type of metaverse and non-immersive or non-addictive type of metaverse. Right? Even though gaming is very strong in Asia and in, in China specifically, but the way the government is pushing is more into augmenting uh, the reality. So, um, to give you some uh, global picture about metaverse within this you know, big trends and new trends and about the internet, uh, metaverse is much more than just you know, those alternative realities. Um, actually, metaverse is usually what we call, um, uh, it's something which is called a web three. So, we believe that metaverse is actually part of the next iteration of the internet, you know, that uh, internet starting long time ago, and the web started uh, so, uh, in 1995. Um, and so we are living into the, what we call the web two. And we think that there is a new wave of uh, web coming over, which is more immersive, more device agnostic, uh, more 3D, um, and we call it web three. In the web three, so you have many three components. And metaverse is one of the core components. Um, but just to mention the two other pillars. So one uh, is what we call blockchain. 
I'm, I'm sure that you've heard about blockchain. Um, and blockchain is a way to secure uh, a transaction or to authentify the ownership of, uh, of uh, an asset and specifically a digital asset. Uh, the key element with blockchain uh, within the metaverse is today in the new wave of metaverse, you can become owner of any piece of land or any object into the metaverse. And uh, you can show this ownership and certify this ownership uh, to anyone. Uh, this is very new and um, that's what makes this new wave a, a bit special because you can monetize, because you can own so you can monetize and of course you can trade. Uh, so blockchain is a very, very important element. Um, another element which is derived from blockchain is NFT, non-fungible um, token. Uh, um, and this, uh, um, let's say, a subset of uh, blockchain, uh, which is specifically uh, used uh, for uh, digital uh, arts or uh, digital pieces um, on the top of uh, blockchain. Uh, so blockchain uh, is used for uh, currency, uh, cryptocurrency and contract, and NFT specifically, specifically for uh, digital assets. Um, what is very specific in China is uh, for NFT, uh, we can buy NFT, but we cannot trade NFT. So it is a kind of limitation. Um, and what is specific into blockchain in China is that in the rest of the world, we can have a decentralized uh, blockchain consortium uh, that define how uh, we can secure assets and how we can contract. In China, we need to have what we call consortium platform or private platforms. So they are centralized. So this is one aspect of the Web3, uh, which is decentralized and open, which is a bit less uh, developed in China. But for the metaverse part, uh, you will see that what we see in the West and what we see in China is pretty similar, uh, with a small difference that hyperreality is probably the part of metaverse which is the most promoted in terms of direction. Um, so what... Uh, so the story continued, though it's, it's not new, it's going to, uh, we are just at a point uh, where we have a set of technology, but this wave is, is going to continue for a while, for maybe for 10 years or 20 years. Um, and what the future uh, will look like, you know, with Metaverse fully developed, uh, it will be a kind of integrated reality. We won't know exactly, you know, what is online, what is offline, uh, and virtual and physical world will converge. Um, so that's, you know, the, the dream or uh, the, the promise of, of Metaverse in the future. Um, it's always interesting to look at what's inside. So when we open the engine, what, what do you see? Uh, and at Fabian Novel, of course, we like to dissect and to, you know, to, to, to look at all the components to better understand you know, the mechanisms, what we can do with that, how we can leverage it, and what are the key technologies that will trigger you know, new business scenario, new uh, case scenario. Um, so in this uh, slide, so it's a bit complicated, but what you can see is they ha we have several layers. Uh, from uh, bottom and deep layers to uh, kind of front layers. So you have a first layer, which is infrastructure. You need a, um, a lot of um, even hardware or uh, computing power to process all these 3D element in real time and with interaction with eventually millions of people in the same platform. Um, so uh, you have so everything which is about a chip hashing power uh, and probably we'll need to go to, uh, toward what we call quantum computing to be able to fully process all these assets um, in the future to be able to have this uh, metaverse fully working. Uh, we also will need uh, to uh, upgrade you know, the network, uh, the, the, the bandwidth. Uh, so we go to 5G now, but we'll have other iteration of, of uh, network uh, that will be necessary actually to process this. And then we have everything which is linked to what we call perceptual interactions. So how you can interact with the internet, not only by looking at your screen, but maybe touching it, uh, sensing it, you know, with gloves or uh, looking at it or interacting with, with it, you know, uh, as you move. Um, and all this, those sets of technology is um, actually where uh, KiwiSense also is working on. And you have what we call XR specifically, which are uh, AR, uh, augmented reality, and virtual reality. Um, 
you have a second layer, and I will not go into much detail, uh, but um, one piece of that, you see blockchain again, uh, but you see artificial intelligence. You know, we have a lot of uh, new development and acceleration of the innovation on artificial intelligence. You probably recently heard about um, uh, generative AI. Have you heard about generative AI? No? So generative AI is uh, the big, big, big buzz word right now. Uh, so basically, you give to an AI engine uh, um, some audio uh, file or some text file or some image. You input whatever thing, and the AI will generate something new out of it and can be extremely creative. So we can have AI that generates um, uh, code, that, that can develop code. Uh, AI that can generate, you know, creative uh, piece of art. Um, AI that can um, solve problems, very complex problems that uh, people don't know how to solve usually. Um, so this is a very big, big topic uh, that we are looking at. And of course, on the top layers, you have all the application. Uh, today, we are going to give illustration mainly into a shopping uh, scenario. But you see that we have a scenario uh, with metaverse that can uh, go into education, travel, entertainment, but also with business to business, uh, supply chain, finance, or even you know uh, business government about you know, public transportation, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, really large. And again, that's why um, I think people have so much attention to Web3 in general, and they believe that nothing will be uh, the same. Uh, after that. Um, so a lot of companies, you know, are actually the builders. So uh, at Faber Novel, we are actually uh, maintain a very uh, large database of those companies specifically in China. And this is how we got to know KiwiSense and uh, got to work with them. Um, so I will conclude with a bit of uh, brand strategy. So brands, what do brands and company can do with it right now and what's happening right now? Is it uh, ready, not ready, and um, what, are, what, are the, what is the impact? So just a few illustrations and um, uh, just uh, to, uh, to go with the discussion later on. The first thing is um, in the West, so outside of China, uh, the trend of you know, uh, brands experimenting into metaverse, NFT, and blockchain already exploded. Really, really, uh, uh, a lot of companies, uh, specifically into the fashion, beauty, and luxury area, actually, have been starting probably the first. Uh, but um, Adidas and Nike also have been uh, jumping very early into this. Um, and they essentially, they explore, you know, a new business scenario. They explore how they can enrich their brand. Uh, they, they explore how they can reach out, you know, this new consumer who are already. Um, going into uh, those universes and which are core um, core consumers. Uh, when we look at what's happening in China, oh, I think I missed one slide. Eventually, yes, it's okay. So uh, when we look at uh, in China, so uh, many brands also started this uh, since a year, year and a half. Um, and uh, we'll just give you some uh, illustration now, but uh, I guess we'll discuss later when we have a discussion. So just a few applications. Um, I don't know if you saw this person before or, or if it's the first time that you see this person on the screen. Uh, so this person is uh, very famous. Um, as you can see, work with already many brands. Uh, this person is a very famous influencer. Uh, but it's a virtual person. This person does not exist. So it's a um, uh, hyper-realistic um, uh, avatar that has been created by Alibaba. Uh, her name is Ayai, and already collaborated with uh, maybe hundreds of brands in China. Uh, probably the first brand uh, that uh, used to uh, that worked with uh, with Ayai was uh, uh, MAC, Mac, you know, the cosmetic company. And we can understand that for beauty company, uh, you know, uh, looking at what people uh, will wear in the metaverse, uh, how fashion will be, you know, maybe fashion will be a bit different. Um, and you know, what kind of style, what kind of makeup 
uh, they will wear uh, is very, very important because it's a totally new territory. Um, and very large companies, I'm thinking about L'Oreal, for instance, who uh, recently, I think it was one month ago, uh, partner with the biggest um, uh, avatar company uh, called uh, Ready Player Me, uh, which is uh, an allusion to the, to the movie. So they provide a cross metaverse platform avatars. So you can use your avatars in multiple uh, metaverses. And uh, L'Oreal is going to become one of the key partners to provide all the makeup palettes for you to uh, do the makeup on your avatar. Uh, but in China, so we, we start to see that trend as well. And uh, Mac was one of the very first to partner with Aya to promote the products. Uh, it was a big hit. It worked very, very well. Um, another trend about avatars and uh, influencers um, is not only to use a uh, virtual avatar, but to use a uh, real person and to create their, uh, their avatar, their, their, their double. Um, so this is a twin uh, avatar of Angela Baby. Uh, and I think Joe has been the first one to work with a twin avatar. Um, and usually, and also with the COVID time, you know, it's difficult to have uh, fashion shows and to bring people on a, on a real event. Um, and, for, and for celebrities, it's difficult to be at multiple events at the same time. Uh, so hence, you know, the, these um, twin avatars. Um, and this is another part of the economy which is uh, developing in China. Uh, and this way to use avatars, real or twins, uh, I think it's very specific to China, just because the KOL economy in China is the biggest in the world. Uh, so it's really something that we can uh, only or specifically observe uh, on the China market. Um, another thing which is interesting is to see, you know, how we'll develop products. Uh, so there, there are a lot of cases where uh, you see companies who provide their um, equivalent product available in the metaverse or products that are just launched in the metaverse first and then you can get you know, later in, in uh, real life. Uh, this company I think is very interesting because it's a streetwear company from China and they only work on metaverses. You can only get those sneakers in the metaverse. Um, all those sneakers are into uh, limited editions. They are delivered into, uh, into the form of NFT, so you own them uh, you know, for life. You can uh, eventually uh, give them or trade them. Um, and this is a new type of company that are born within the metaverse. And their products are only available within the metaverse. Um, so they're fully, fully native. They are very successful. Um, and again, uh, very interesting to, to observe as a, as a new trend. So if you are curious, you can you know, search online and uh, try to see how to buy, you know, your, uh, your sneakers. Uh, so you have the flying sneakers because uh, on, on the metaverse, you know, you can do a lot of things that you cannot do in real life. So that's why you see uh, uh, a special uh, design of those uh, sneakers. And they cost a lot. It's not, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not uh, free. It's uh, pretty expensive, actually. Um, um, and I would like to conclude on uh, maybe some other categories. Um, <clears throat> so this is something which is close to us because it's just on the uh, Huahai Lu. You probably visit the TX uh, Huahai, um, this uh, department store or shopping mall. Um, and this um, department store uh, online is only uh, um, offline, so it's already really interesting because it's not here to compete against e-commerce but it's more about a physical place to showcase what you find online. And you have, you know, a very strong, a strong rotation of product every three months. You know, if you go there, and three months later, you'll see totally different products. So it's really a event-based type of shopping experience, uh, fully dedicated to Gen Z. Um, so already as an offline concept, it's very, very innovative. And um, they push this a bit further by, by creating a fully immersive um, replica of uh, their shopping mall online. So you can visit, explore new things, unlock new uh, part of the, of the environment uh, and experience before or after visiting the, the, the real space. And um, it is something that we are going to see um, uh, and to develop into the real estate business in general. 
were you know experiencing the 3D environment before actually buying an apartment or going to a physical place uh, can bring a, a specific value. Um, and eventually you can go there alone, but you can also meet people there. You can even socialize uh, into the replica of this uh, real uh, real estate um, properties. Um, so interesting scenario, and again, this is very new, and uh, we are looking at how those companies are exploring. Uh, some cases are interesting, but not working right now, and some cases might represent what could be the mainstream in the future. So always, again, interesting to see all of these um, experiences. Um, and we could not finish with an uh, in industry which is very big in China because this is the biggest in the world in China, which is the automotive industry, uh, and the way people buy cars. Uh, I don't know if you bought a car in China uh, or if you bought a car everywhere else. So usually you go uh, to a car dealer. Uh, eventually you book your, uh, you book your appointment. Uh, and then uh, you eventually you are considered to be a potential buyer and uh, someone will go to you and uh, uh, help you to try the car or maybe you don't look good enough that day and uh, they, they will consider you might not good enough to be a client. Uh, and eventually you queue because these people, it's, uh, it's, it's an experience which is uh, sometimes not uh, extremely pleasant and sometimes it's, it's good. Uh, depending on uh, who you are and if you are part of the CRM program or not. What is interesting uh, uh, with Link & Co, uh, which is a company from a Geely group, is they created a showroom online where not only uh, you have you know, the personal service, uh, so they upgrade the service because you have one-on-one, uh, let's say, welcoming um, uh, with, uh, with uh, someone who is going to uh, help you to um, understand what you want and the car that you would like to see. And you can sit in the car, uh, but uh, you can also see part of the car that you will never see you know, uh, in reality. So you can go beyond, uh, beyond the reality uh, and actually, when we say metaverse, meta means beyond, it doesn't mean 3D, right? So, so it's really, I think, a good um, illustration about how you can bring something which is not just a replica of what you can see, uh, what you can do uh, offline, because uh, offline is already 3D, right? But something where you can go beyond that, so you can see inside the engine, you can see all the parts that usually you cannot explore. All right, so... Um, we have a lot of cases like this, so I could go on and on. Uh, but maybe as a conclusion, uh, what we observe as you know, um, uh, value added for companies, you know, uh, going into metaverse and exploring uh, new use case, um, mainly three aspects. One is, you know, brand is everything for um, um, facing client-facing company. So the way to be able to um, extend the brand experience. Uh, either uh, developing the brand um, uh, territory with those metaverses or with you know three D products, uh, or augmenting you know uh, the, the 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 product real product with a virtual experience, is extremely uh, important. Um, a second aspect is how to engage with consumers, um, and usually we have different type of categories. So we have the core users of the, of the metaverse, which are the uh, usually Gen Z and also trendsetters. So not only you target uh, young consumers, but they will influence a lot of other consumers. Um, and eventually um, you will also be able to uh, create new user scenario like uh, with a Gilly um, case where you engage more deeply with consumer, with your existing consumers. And lastly, it's about converting. Uh, because, and this is probably the most interesting part, uh, actually there is a lot of companies that can totally reinvent or uh, uh, recreate new business model in addition to what they have, a uh, new user scenario. Uh, and eventually we can have companies that can uh, develop uh, through those new scenarios and become competitor of the traditional companies. Uh, so every time there's a new technology, you know, uh, it's a risk for the existing you know, uh, leaders and an opportunity for uh, startups to eventually become, uh, to take them uh, market shares. Uh, so a lot of things uh, around new business models uh, that also we try to uh, explore. All right, uh, so if you want to know more uh, about this, we have been extensively 
publishing and probably saw that into our channels around uh, metaverse and chanaverse specifically this is one of the study but i believe that we have uh, two or three more in specific verticals i think we did one into uh, healthcare uh, you know how to you know healthcare industry uh, can be empowered to use uh, blockchain metaverse uh, 3d technologies uh, it's very very interesting uh, we just did one into beauty that going to be published in a few days uh, and I think we have another one around the fashion and luxury. Um, so, um, and, 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 and uh, of course, we have a lot of uh, people who are experts. I'm the, le the least expert of the, <laughs> of the company here, but we have people who are specifically uh, doing those studies. Uh, happy to connect you with them if you are interested to know more. Uh, and if you want to get the studies and if you know where to start, uh, feel free to contact me directly. I would be uh, very happy to, uh, to send it to you uh, and to all the CCIFC community. Great. So, uh, so this is for this session. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to now welcome uh, Stephen. <laughs> if you want to come to me, uh, I guess we need to switch the computer. <laughs> you want to give a, a, a more extensive uh, introduction about Kivisense and Stephen uh, Niska? What I want to say is uh, Stephen has been supporting us since we launched this study in May. We did an interview with Stephen and Simin together, the author. So. I wanted to quote one thing from Stephen because he claimed himself to be, he said AR is going to be the things that makes mankind a better life. So I will give the mic to Stephen to see how it's going to make you a better life. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Yeah, doing this uh, outbreak of COVID is really, really treasure to meet people face to face. Yeah, and uh, also welcome everyone online and this is a, a great meeting here to let us more inform about the uh, metaverse. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, based on uh, my uh, previous life and uh, work, I can share some a uh, little bit of detail of the metaverse we're doing right now. So, uh, first about the uh, KiwiSense. The KiwiSense is uh, actually is a <clears throat> third company I've been uh, I've been devote my life to. <laughs> Yeah, it's my, uh, it's my uh, very treasured baby. And uh, we focus on the uh, AR and uh, web AR technology in e-commerce and the digital marketing scenarios. Uh, we are a senior French joint venture and we use this AR technology to uh, let, uh, let our partners, our brands, our friends to create value in the reality. So the AR is spelled for the augmented reality, but, but I spelled it for the augment your value in reality. So this is how we spell AR. So eventually hope everyone here can uh, gain the value beyond reality. And we, uh, KiwiSense also won some, uh, won some award and the global attention last year, especially for the Meta as a one, one of the five best startup globally. And we, some of our uh, project has won some uh, campaign, some awards like the FS, uh, the, the automobile projects later I, I can show. And uh, we mainly uh, create the AR in e-commerce platform. So most of our clients are from the luxury brands, but we also create so many more for all the other brands. So everyone, can have a seat, can have a piece of huge market in metaverse. And that is, that is how we uh, augment the value for these brands. So uh, basically our, uh, our company, we have uh, three key product. The first one, of course, the metaverse. Yeah, it's been the hottest buzzword since last two years right after the Zuckerberg changed his company name. Yeah, so, so the 
first case I'm gonna share is uh, Metaway is, uh, is a new is a new word, but ten years ago when I doing the uh, AR or VR, this is something we create. We create a scenario of of the space online, and people can browse the line, browse browse it online, and uh, enter a different room. And in different rooms, they can browse different product. And we use uh, we use a photo to create this room, like a, a sphere. Yep, that is ten years ago. Yeah, ten years ago, we doing this project a lot, and we also create the product project the online virtual boutique with 3D modeling. So the metaverse is even though it's a it's a new world, it, all the technology, all the concept come from the all the other kind of technology like rendering, the WebGL, the 3D, the gamification, the the physical engine, something like the Unity. So uh, but the thing is, the metaverse is coming to our life because we have blurred the boundary. Uh, back to back to ten year ten ten years ago, maybe you need to download the app. You need to download, install the setup for the computer to have the game. But right now, only a link, a car of WeChat, and you can browse metaverse anywhere, any place you like. So that is how we uh, built this Maybelline project from scratch. And user need to uh, push a button because this is a, this is a very metaverse we built for Maybelline on Taobao. Yeah, Taobao is a platform, is, uh, is uh, many brands uh, have their business on it, but Taobao is also a very um, limited platform because you can't get enough algorithm to do what you are going to compute about the rendering, about the how we track human body, like put on the shoes virtually, put on the watch virtually. So based on this scenario, we create the Omni platform for the metaverse as a solution. So you may see the video here. When the user push your stereo volume up, to enter the futuristic city in a flying car, like this. Yep, here's a here's a view in the flying car. Yeah, and when you stop at a house of beat, you can browse for different kind of product. The starting product, and for different kind of product, there is different kind of uh, gamification. Some is for the AR try-on, some is for the little game, and some is for the uh, beauty tips and some for the dance game. And all these kind of things is let their VIP, let the, the fans of the brands to engage, especially with their uh, spoke model easy, the, the K-pop K -pop group. So, um, so doing these doing these scenarios, and you can find the 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 fans can find the joy, can find the engagement here, and they're gonna spend the more time they spend in this space, the the more likely they're gonna purchase it. Yeah. So uh, out, so after each room you explore, you will get a coupon, and you can use it to buy the thing you like. And this is uh, some of the matter online metaverse we we be doing, and we also can we also have create the online boutique store, the limited time boutique store for Yves Saint Lohan. and for this in these scenarios we just uh, create a virtual room where you can actually step in. And oh yeah, and uh, the most important thing is we. Uh, bridges metaverse in the uh, DFS metaverse. So there are multiple metaverse connected together. This is something good because everyone is doing metaverse. So how we are going to uh, connect between metaverse to metaverse? Yep. So in this, uh, in this case, we just uh, provide 
the Ips and Loha users, the fans, some uh, some game, some um, exclusive experience about their product and about their 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 story, their value towards humans, something like that. And uh, what's, what's more important is we connect the online metaverse to the physical boutique store. And this is a boutique store in Hainan and uh, it's running, it's running uh, from last month and it's still running now. And if you are uh, close at the end of this month, so this is a time limited uh, pop-up. Yep. And during this pop-up, the space is limited because because so many brands doing the pop-up here. But after you put on the headset, the oculus, you can have unlimited space. And you can browse the product to see the online booty store. And you can see there are many people who like to play here to see the product, to see the exclusive effect we do for this different kind of uh, product. And the more important thing is what you see right here is not just a video. You can see the point of view from the users. It is uh, actual live in real time rendered on Oculus device. So this is a headset device and we uh, made it omnichannel. It's supported for the mobile, for the desktop, for the Oculus, and you can get a little gift after you play this metaverse. So we uh, somehow connected everything together and make it exclusive for our brands. Oh, yeah, and the, at the opposite of the brands, there is a IPSA showcase. Uh, we, we, it, it just right next to our IPSA Loha uh, pop-up. Yeah, it's, uh, what a coincidence. And during this, these scenarios, uh, we just let user to, uh, those user come to a pop-up can have the filter in AR mode. And the KOL, the celebrity can shot their story, can record what they are having right now and uh, spread on the social media. So the thing is, uh, after you hit any of the metaverse, how are you gonna take photo in it? How are you gonna share between the world on your circle, on your moment? And this is how, because when user engage in the filters, if you rise the rate that they're gonna share it. So we just create this, um, this all the AI filters with care, with good care. We take care of every detail of it and we let them to have fun and share it. And about the, um, and about the, uh, uh, sometimes we, when we uh, tell story to the, to the brands, when we uh, pitch to the brands, we always say three words, the awareness, the loyalty of consumer and retention. So um, how you convert from online to offline and drive more traffic from offline to online. Yeah, this is a topic, give a headache to everyone. So uh, we always come to a different kind of solution, different kind of angle to provide this uh, with different brands. And in this case, the, the brands come up with a story, uh, come up with a question. They have physical offline boutique, but why they need the online boutique as well? Because the online boutique can uh, spread on the social media and they can uh, have a advertising, advertising uh, budget and to share between the, <clears throat> the moment in, in, in WeChat. And, and when you uh, browse as a space, you can register for the offline space. You can book your trip to the offline limited boutique store. So that's why when we are uh, doing, when we uh, show the technology, here is people 
uh, open the mini program here, they actually need to enter the space. You can see the video at, at the beginning. Uh, when you enter this mini program, you can place a portal right in front of you and you need to enter to walk in as the uh, anchor for the, for the users to, to imply them they need to walk in their offline boutique store. And yeah, this is some little bit of creative we, we have and uh, this have largely reached the re registration rate for, for, the, for the people and, and more people coming to the offline boutique store after this, under this uh, reservation mini program. So um, about the retention, the thing is, <clears throat> when we talk about the retention, the thing is the more people gonna share it, the more people gonna see it and uh, whether, you, whether or not you are the fans of it, uh, you will come to have fun because less people gonna spend time in the advertisement. Yeah, they, they just don't want to, they just want to skip the 10 second advertisement videos at the very beginning, but they would like to see, to play themselves in the delightful experience. So that is how we uh, help the, the Vogue and the Timor Luxury in these scenarios. We create <clears throat> some um, experience for the uh, KOL, for the, uh, for the people to take photo with it take photo with the IP of the brands. And we also take great care during the, during the beginning of the metaverse. Um, this is not a open space metaverse. It is more like a roller coaster metaverse because when the metaverse is open spaces, uh, people will get lost in it. They, they don't know where to go. Yeah, there's so many shop and uh, where exactly I need to go. So in this roller coaster uh, metaverse, uh, people will see everything in great view. And within 10 seconds, they will see the brands. That's what they like most. Yeah, because they want to, they want to have more awareness between the young people. Yeah, so uh, 10 seconds to the 10 second hit a topic that is very important, especially in metaverse, because uh, some of the metaverse is so large so vast and people actually get lost and don't know where they coming for. Yep. So uh, during these scenarios, we just uh, build a beautiful journey for them and the people can have fun in it. So you may see the, so, so you may see the view here. Um, we work with Vogue and uh, Vogue provide uh, uh, co-work with some other different brands. And um, Doing this rendering uh, video is not just a video, it's, uh, it's a live in 3D rendering. So we, so, so the engine of, of KiwiSense is, we can render every detail with great, with great care. And you can also take selfie with, uh, with the avatar from the brands and you can browse 360 in the view of in the view of you like. So this is some kind of a UGC AR experience, user generated content. Yep. So uh, when they generate the content, they can generate audios, videos, AR selfies, so in this case, this one is for the but with the, the FIFA, the hottest, the hottest this this month. Everyone is on it. So uh, doing this biggest marketing times, we build the we build the AI tracking to all the bottle of but with the have, and you can come up with a. Avatar from different kind of country bottle, and you can talk to it. We have conversational AI. Yeah, the the audio is muted, so uh, so 
so you, you won't hear it, but people can talk with the bottle, like he's your buddy. You can ask him uh, who you think gonna win, and then he can tell you a joke, tell you a rap. Yeah, actually, it can tell you a rap, and it can tell you the, his perspective of something, and people will have great time drinking the beer because you need to buy the taxi, uh, you need to buy the, but with a bottle and you can have these uh, in interactions on your hands. Yep. And this is somehow connected to the sales part, the conversion. So the different kind of user generated AI experience or the metaverse experience mostly is for people to have fun. And this is how we uh, use metaverse to attract, to raise up the rate of awareness. And especially for their VIP users, the more fun they're gonna have, the more loyalty they're gonna be. So the consumer loyalty is very important here because they, they're gonna think the brands care about you. They care about the VIP they're gonna be flattered. So they're gonna buy more, yeah. So some, sometimes we, uh, the metaverse is only like a, a space, the open space for people to, to explore. But we also need to have something interesting, something fun, like a game to let them uh, thinking thinking that it's very important to win the gift. For example, like the Maschino one. We, uh, there is a, a bag for free for the, for the champion. So the people here is really getting crazy about it. Recently, there is a game is called uh, Yang Le Ge Yang. Yep, is uh, is spreading overnight and the, it reached to, let me see the data. It reached to, it reached to 20 million unique visitor in three days. It's, it's, it's crazy, yep. But the machine again is, uh, is, is not that, it's not that easy, <laughs> but we reached to the uh, 500,000 a week unit with a week. And uh, we also give some uh, coupon. We also give the, the best, the, give the champion for the free bag as a, as a gift. So we can see the data behind this game. People are getting crazy. They, they play it over and over again. And if you lost all three lives, you're gonna invite you're gonna some tasks here to gain more life. And that is how it pop up. That's how it get getting popular. So uh, during this uh, Chinese Valentine's Day, we help the brands uh, reach more than three million RMB in in cell conversion. Yep, because we use a coupon to do the to do the check. We can check every single detail, and yep, it's a it's a really good result. So this is a uh, uh, Christmas. This is the uh, last case I'm gonna show. It's uh, it's uh, sometimes the exclusive. It is very important. We do this ex exclusive experience for the for the VIP, for the users, for the for the for the people buy the product, and they can receive a link, and this link could be the could be the first conversation between the sales assistant of the brands and the consumer. They can build the trust with this something fun. Yep, because if, uh, if the sales assistant always send you some pictures, how do you like it when you're gonna buy it, you will just delete him. <laughs> so sometimes they use this gamification to uh, have the entertainment, uh, the customer and uh, the assistants. This is very important. Yep, it's more like to 
now with a friends in the metaverse. So uh, right now what we are doing is we put everything together. The AR trial, the metaverse, the gamification, we put everything together to uh, let the metaverse less metaverse. It's more like you are going to you are going to into the store to uh, have fun, hang out with your friends and have fun in it. So uh, I think the ultimate metaverse is a hyper reality. That is very important. That is the final version of the augmented reality, but it takes time. So between these times, we're gonna uh, build everything we have and uh, have fun all together. That is very important. Yeah, to have more friendship, to have face-to-face -face connection. Yeah, anyway, thank you. Thank you for today's. Yep. Merry Christmas. Uh, so the next one, we'll be having a little fireside chat between Stephen and uh, Patrice. So I'm here to ask some questions and dig into their minds. And uh, after my question is done, then feel free to raise any question you have in mind. And Patrice and Stephen here will be giving you an answer. So it was pretty exciting to hear what Patrice has said and also Stephen has shared about all the AR uh, metaverse scenarios here. It's pretty amazing to me. Every time I see Kiwi says videos, I was like, oh, I was amazed, right? And so to bring the questions, um, because you have shared a lot, so what is your perspective of the metaverse and what makes it so special and to people consider it to be the future of the internet? Uh, so yeah, large question, but, um, I used to say, you know, you cannot undo the past and you cannot stop the future. It's, uh, the question is with metaverse is, uh, is not about if we like it or not. Uh, the technology is there and it's going to unfold into some user scenario that we don't know yet, right? Uh, so you are creating a lot of user scenario with your technology and the, the company you work with, but a lot more we unfold and this is for us to discover. Uh, so it's there for good. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to, to say that it started already uh, a long time ago. So we are in the process. Uh, it will still take some time. Uh, agree to have you know um, all the, um, the experience that we already imagine within the books or within the videos to happen but we see uh, already some fun experiences already now um, how it will develop uh, it's very difficult to say <laughs> uh, it's probably will develop in a way i mean we can control the technology uh, and you know many things that we see now are things that we have imagined and dream you know in the past so look at the old movies and the old books. <laughs> Maybe you will see a bit of a future in metaverse. And, uh, and because we try to make this happen in a way, we are all dreamers and uh, people who work on technology are the, sometimes the biggest dreamers. They try to code the future <laughs> and to make it happen. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, uh, I'm really a dreamer, I think. Yeah, because at the very beginning of these uh, of this, this companies, I just saw the saw the hyper reality videos, and that's it. That's the future. So I devoted all my time and uh, and uh, recruit many friends and partners in this and uh, to develop something ultimately uh, in this in, into the reality. Yeah, we hope this day could come to your life sooner. So the metaverse is uh, is is a really amazing thing. Yeah, it can break the boundary, break the physical world, and doing especially during the the pandemic period. Yeah, people can hang, hang hang out together, and but they can meet face to face in metaverse, because in metaverse when you uh, put on the put on the gear like some kind of headset. And you can make eye contact like this. And you can see someone coming from your right or left and you can have a spiritual audience. So it's actually like uh, meeting face to face. Yep. And 
Maybe something which is a bit uh, ingrained into your question is, uh, is it good or is it positive or not? Yeah. Uh, in a way, actually, the technology is neither good or bad, right? So, and of course, there is some downsides of, of this. I think one of, one of it is to be immersed too much. You know, you are kind of locked. You lock yourself out of uh, the real world and real interactions. We already see that in our smartphone. I think we have all the same experience where we think we, we spend too much time in front of the screen. Yeah. Uh, and those technology are even more addictive. Mm -hmm. So what when you can see what a candy crush can do <laughs> on people can you imagine what a super 3d environment can you can do on uh, more people in terms of uh, addiction that's uh, so there is some downsides for sure and I, I think we need to be careful about it uh and to prevent ourselves about it yeah so that brings me to another question as you talk about the downside, because I have seen some comments saying, so AR and AR, AI technology are nothing new. So why suddenly you put them together and call it metaverse? It should be a trend. Like, mm -hmm. So people would call it like it could be a, like a marketing fraud. Like it's just repackaging all the old technology and we call it a new one. And we say, oh, we need to embrace this. So what do you think about these comments like this? Yeah, the metaverse actually is an is umbrella term. Yeah, it's a, it's a word that's telling everyone everything is, is here. But uh, instead, of, instead of, say, the metaverse words, you say here is a cryptocurrency, here's an NFT, that people get confused. What's that? So the metaverse is something like, come on, here's, here, here we got fun. But in the marketing terms, uh, metaverse is more like... Um, Right now, right now, to me, I think it's more like a campaign thing because uh, brands are doing metaverse like a campaign. It's not a daily use. It's only a seasonal usage or, or maybe they just use it for one time. And uh, for next campaign, they want to do something more, something, something more fancy, something, something uh, better. But in the metaverse, I think... Uh, uh, there, are, there are still not many uh, scenarios. For example, how we gonna daily involved in the metaverse. So we need a killer app for that. Like the how we do sport in the metaverse, how we social, how we uh, listen to the console music. Yep. So the metaverse right now is a is a is a is a baby. Yeah. We need people need more time to develop different kind of scenarios and applications here. So, yeah, this uh, is a for that's a little bit too beyond. <laughs> yeah, but this is something that is a is a is a memory. It's just like the the the, the 通行, 大数据. It, it is like a memory for the pandemic. Yeah, so the metaverse is something like a uh, part of the hyper-reality phrase, I think. Yeah. I have a similar view. Uh, so in a way, metaverse is a mega trend. And we all see that, that actually it's built upon many technologies. Um, but to give an image, if you think about the water and you think about all the degrees and uh, you have 99 trends, 99 degrees, and what happened, you know, we, we do add one more degree. Uh, is, is it still water? It's just changed by nature just because you add one degree. So I think it's a bit the same. So with Metaverse, it's a mega trend. It's an accumulation of many, many other things. Uh, but at some point, it's changed the nature and f like forever. Like it's, uh, so this is uh, this, uh, this kind of um, evolution that we can see. And it will change everything still. Uh, but we are into it, so it's difficult to know if it's past, if it's in front of us. Um, there is a book which is interesting about uh, to read about trench, which is called The Tipping Point. I don't know if you heard about this book. And uh, the thing with Tipping Point is um, you only know that there is a trend when you passed the point, which is a tipping point, and it's already too late, right? So what we all try to do is to try to see that before the tipping point and to see the trend forming, and I think that's why a lot of people are exci excited. Is the tipping point tomorrow or in 10 years? We'll only know when we'll pass that point. <laughs> so that's, that's uh, the, the paradox of it. 
so and uh, also as uh steven mentioned that uh metaverse for now is like a baby version so brands and corporates are still using it for marketing and branding functions so i'm wondering if it's a very specific in the china market or is there any difference in terms of metaverse between the western world and china because we know that nft is definitely so different that China, we're not allowed to do a secondary trading. But how about metaverse? How the application scenarios are different? The metaverse in China, I think, is a castration version. Yeah, <laughs> because the cryptocurrency, the the uh, the NFT, the blockchain is is not uh, it is forbidden because of some kind of regulation things. Yep. So the metaverse right now here is something like, um, is is like a park. You can spend your time here, but you can buy the souvenir. The NFT is more like a souvenir. So even though it's it's not a whole metaverse like all the other countries, but this is metaverse. At least we can spend more time in it, and we can learn many things in the metaverse because. The uh, the virtual reality, the metaverse things, they can uh, reconstruction everything in details. So that's why there are more training, um, uh, expert training. For example, teach you how to make a plan. For for example, yeah, uh, doing this kind of uh, training metaverse is more uh, functional, uh, good because you can see what you see, and you will understand in process. Yep. So, uh, so compared to the rest of the world, I think is uh, is 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 not whole, but it still have a wonderful time here. So yeah. So maybe uh, in addition to what you said, Stephen, so uh, actually when we look at Web three, if we take the big picture, and when we look at the trend behind, um, I believe there is actually two types of driving forces. So. Uh, one is around uh, blockchain. Um, and this is something which is really linked to the very beginning of the internet, you know, with an open source, uh, self-managed, you know, network, um, shortcutting, you know, uh, states, private, you know, big uh, companies, uh, self-management of the internet and assets and everything. And this is a, is a very strong force of the internet in general that go to the web, that go to the web three, that will go to web four and uh, is, uh, is coming from, from people. Uh, and it's opposing trends to established, uh, let's say powers, states, big companies, uh, big powers, etc. cetera. Um, this is the one that is the most difficult to develop uh, in China, of course. Uh, so when you talk about uh, NFT, etc., because it's undercutting established, you know, uh, institutions, uh, and it can also destabilize, of course, those institutions. Uh, not any country, like every country, won't like to have an additional currency, right? A competitive currency or banks. Uh, I've been working in banks for 11 years. They don't like to have. Uh, a company that are able to uh, loan uh, to people or to, to do what they do. Uh, but this is a very strong force and it's been there all the time. Um, uh, so, and it's constrained over time, but never, uh, let's say, um, diminish. And there is another trend, which is the 3D uh, environment, uh, what we saw coming with uh, Facebook in 21, uh, renaming as Meta. Uh, and I think it's a very different trend. It's more like organized by the market. Uh, because as you could see, uh, when I show you know, all the infrastructure, as soon as you go there, you will feed a lot of companies uh, to develop uh, infrastructure networks, uh, it's a big economy. It's a it's a big way. It's a great way to reboost uh, this internet economy by going into 3D. But not anyone asks to live in a 3D world uh, today or tomorrow. It's it's great. But if it's happening tomorrow, it's also great, right? Or if it happened before. So there's not so much of an underlying force which is coming from people. It's more coming more from um, from companies. So I think these two are very different. And uh, the second one is less constrained in China. The first one is more constrained uh, in China and so in some other countries. So I think that's what makes the difference. Yeah. Totally, I get it. 
So uh, if we take zoom into a smaller picture, if we're focusing on the brand and the consumers, and uh, we shared a lot of cases of what brands practices right now. So uh, among the cases you shared, which one would like strikes you the most and you find it most interesting? either you're working with it or when you see it online. So, and also what's the underlying implications for brand strategy? Yeah. So maybe, Steven? What's yours? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, I think there are many. Um, uh, I think the one that uh, is very interesting because it's specific to China and the impact is already huge. Uh, is about like uh, online shopping and um, and uh, influencers because already in China, uh, half of the consumption online is influenced by uh, KOLs, uh, and many of people who follow KOLs say also a uh, majority follow virtual KOLs. Uh, so already the impact on purchasing and on the economy is huge. Um, already with that. Uh, use case. Uh, so I think for me the most striking is not the most sophisticated scenario, uh, but when we, we see uh, IIE and uh, you no know, super realistic uh, avatar, still it's still uh, in terms of technology, it's uh, still um, quite interesting. Yeah, I think so too because IIE is really um, because uh, something is uh, transforming for the uh, for the. Uh, uh, real celebrity to the virtual celebrity or even to the IP like the Fortnite, the, you know, the, the Travis Scott, they, they, they uh, make a concert on the Fortnite, for the virtual concert on the, on the Fortnite and almost it got um, $20 million for it. Yeah, and it has, um, it has so many, it has uh, more than a million people in it. Because every concert, uh, like uh, Scott's uh, annual tour, the most compatibility is uh, fifty thousand. Yep. So, so the so that is how the metaverse break the boundary between the real world and physicals. So, because uh, it, the the imagination is right in front of you, you can just just ignore it because everyone is in it. Everyone is having fun in it. Everyone can actual to rock and roll in the metaverse. So that is the, the Travis Scott uh, metaverse concert is a, is a showcase struck me in the most. Yeah. Okay, I have a little harsh question for Patrice because you like Ayayi the avatar so, 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 so bad. So I was like, um, because you know, when people, uh, when brands are choosing like uh, idols or like celebrities to endorse for their brands, we see so many cases of celebrities got scandals and they have to do some crisis management about that. So people say like one safe choice is you, you use uh, virtual celebrities. So they tell and say exactly what you told them to. And you are not like a, Fear, uh, fearing that they will say something bad or like uh, like misbehave. So so in this case, do you think a uh, virtual idol is more trustworthy in like into a consumer's eyes, more trustworthy than a celebrity or less? What, what's your opinion on this? I think the real fun the, will be when those um, virtual avatar will have more uh, AI power. I was talking about uh, mm. generative AI. Yeah. For now, you cannot really have a conversation with AI and it's no. fully controlled about what she is scripted, probably, etc. Yeah. Uh, so um, there's not much of uh, spirit you know, that beyond the image of the even hyper-realistic avatar. But now, actually, the technology allowed to have um, Conversation and, uh, uh, and and to really uh, interact uh, in a genuine way with uh, avatars uh, without knowing if it's a real person or make, being able to make the distinction about it. You know, there is um, something uh, called the Turing test. Uh, the Turing test is uh, is named after Mr. Turing, and it's a test where you know uh, you discuss with someone blindly or in a machine and you have to know which one is uh, which and uh, since a while actually a lot of machine win this uh, Turing test uh, but now I think we have a, a very big leapfrog in terms of uh, AI um, 
uh, engines where uh, it's it's very complicated to uh, to know who you are talking to and you can simulate a lot of scenario outside of the Turing test uh, in whatever condition we might not know how you know who we're discussing with uh, if the bot is a real bot or if the avatar is uh, with someone really behind and then will be they will have their creativity they they will say something which is not scripted uh, and then Maybe we'll go back to something which is uncontrolled and then we'll go with scandals, but <laughs> we might have scandals with AI, <laughs> AI person. Yeah. Uh, that will be, so that will be the real fun. Uh, let's see yeah. how it, it goes, but uh, that would be interesting. I'm yeah. waiting for that. Okay, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, I see you. <laughs> so speaking of AI, because I see Steven showcase a lot of like a, AR technologies, how people having fun with their phone and other devices. So can you like uh, uh, introduce us about how the AI, algor AI algorithm works for your like uh, whole building of the metaverse? Uh, actually, we use something like uh, generated AI in it already. Uh, for one thing, it's our AI algorithm we build it from AI. Yeah, our uh, basic framework of the development, the Top secret business <laughs> is the AI. Yeah, AI is a key. And uh, that is the uh, algorithm level. We use AI to generate it algorithm. And uh, on the marketing things, we use the uh, AI as a conversational one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, but with a showcase. Yeah, people can actually talk to the, the bottle. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, talk to your friends. But at the very beginning, it's a little bit awkward because it can use some dirty words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because we, we lay no uh, limitation on the original AI, original conversational AI. So uh, we just input all kind of data and uh, let it emphasize themselves. So they actually use the dirty words. Yeah, that's give us headache because the brands, of course, don't want it. <laughs> but this is sometimes thing that is real as a person. Yeah, mm, so yeah. Uh, you, you can have a scandal, you can say the wrong words, you are the real one. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that is uh, AI I, I, like, I like eventually. Yeah, not the uh, pretend to be your friend, some, some AI like that. It's not real, no, no block and flesh. Yeah. I mean, of course, we, we cannot not think about some scenario and uh, legal you know, things of responsibility when the AI took a decision. Mm -hmm. We already have you know, the, the question of uh, self-driving uh, yeah. with the AI that you know, might bring you to have an accident. Like who is responsible? Is it the AI itself, the person who coded the AI? Is it the car mm -hmm. uh, manufacturer? Is it you who let... You know, uh, and I think the same will arrive with, uh, with uh, AI-generated... You know, um, avatar or bot about what they can say. I think the f one of the first uh, experience of uh, AI like massively open to the public was with Google. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually they had to disconnect <laughs> the AI uh, system uh, because it had like a revisionist, you know, uh, uh, things into, into the engine because there is no conscience, of course, and uh, maybe it's for the best. But the thing is, uh, what is a bad word? Was it a dirty word? There is no element about this. What can be said? What is uh, ethical, not ethical to say? Of course, it's not coded. And nobody knows how to code that. Right? So for now, it's, uh, it's a bit of uh, open space. So a lot of uh, things to uncover. And uh, I think we have also the legal framework we need to adapt. Mm -hmm. We already have the same with robotics. Yeah. Uh, we need to have we, have, we have the first law to bring robots to the public. Uh, the same as you bring a, a drug to the public, you have a lot of um, you know, certification, it's a process. And uh, the first time we had to bring robots into a public space, we didn't have any law. Uh, and we had to have the first robotic law, uh, like uh, it was already 10 years ago, but uh, the same will arrive with uh, AI law, I guess. Cool. So um, concerning the time, I'm not going to take our audience too much time and we'll, I will still leave you some time to ask your questions. So I will try, uh, I will um, ask you to conclude uh, with a sentence on how to, on how you give advice to brands and corporates, how to onboard on the, uh, with the metaverse. Yeah. 
Yeah, the first thing you need to uh, you need to know is uh, what is your KPI. <laughs> yeah, awareness, the consumer loyalty, or the retention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, in different kind of uh, KPI, we have different kind of solution. Yeah, so that is very important because we our strategy is it uh, aren't always the same. Yeah, so. Uh, after you uh, figure out your your KPI, and we're gonna build something fun and something uh, good to share, or something uh, target to share, or something target to uh, for for user to to buy it, and that is always uh, data driven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we will uh, provide different kind of scenarios with uh, data mode. And uh, people will, the, the brands will know uh, how much budget they can spend in it, and uh, the estimated return of investment will be. Yep, and that is how we uh, pitch the the brands sometimes. Yeah. So, so, uh, so normally for the brands, I think all in metaverse. That's the true. <laughs> Yeah, you you won't you won't you won't make me you won't make a mistake because matter is transforming from nice to have to must to have. Yep, because uh, we have already have some uh, key uh, data about how many people are gonna involve, how many people are gonna share, and what strategy that will be good for what kind of event, the Christmas, the Chinese New Year, the the CBD, something like that is is different. Yeah, the details totally different. Yeah, but the result will be the same. Yeah, to have more awareness, to have better conversion rates, or or the less return rates. Yep. I have a similar view, uh, and uh, when something is happening, you cannot stop. And uh, I, I guess we cannot stop it. Is you know, it's the thing is disrupt or be disrupted. <laughs> So the, the only question is not if, but how to go there. Uh, what I guess is very overwhelming is all these sets of technologies uh, that we not fully understand. We don't fully understand everything as well. There's too, too much and uh, we are overwhelmed. But the real innovation is not technology. The real innovation is with users. And uh, what we say when we work with brand is we know, we know you know your users you know how to engage them, uh, you know your product. Uh, the innovation will be how we change that and the technology will just be an enabler uh, and we look at what technology can allow what. But the starting point is not the technology, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, and that's a way to start the journey in a good, in a good direction. Um, so starting with the users um, and the consumer journey. Thank you. I'm just gonna start maybe with one question we got from uh, online. Um, actually, maybe it's more for Stephen, but uh, Patrice, feel free to answer as well. The question was, um, can, can you tell us maybe some examples about uh, where the metaverse allowed the client to uh, succeed in marketing efforts that uh, did not maybe work uh, for offline? Uh, yeah, for uh, offline. You have some case like this. I think this question is uh, raised before the pandemic period. Yeah, so after the after the lockdown, the, the offline business is is uh, is really a headache. So the matter is something like a cure for the uh, offline uh, event, but metaverse is also the solution to make more people know about the offline event. So whether or not you are doing the uh, offline event or the online event. Um, we need to focus on your product features. Yeah, because I, I don't know <laughs> the, 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 the question, where the question coming from. So I, I have no ideas about the, the features, the key of the products. Usually we will uh, come up with solution to, the, to solve the pain point. For example, the, the ring. The, the, the selling ring online, the pain point is the size of the ring. 
Yep. So it uh is vary from product to product. Is uh depends on what's what what's your goal, what industrial you are in, and what product you gonna you want to be pop. Just complementing and actually using uh, what you just uh, mentioned as a technology, how to use, how to um, I don't know, uh, try I don't know, uh, one of that pair of sneakers, you know, uh, in five minutes offline. You cannot do that, right? In AR, you can do it, and you can change like 100, 200, and find the one that you like. Another example that you mentioned, which I think is really great, I think will change a lot the way we do concerts. How to get two million, you know, uh, participants to your concert. It's impossible offline. <laughs> but it's two million or 10 million doesn't make a difference online in the metaverse. So I think there's a lot of scenario uh, where actually you cannot do it at all offline. Uh, but it's not a problem online at all. Uh, but again, I think we had this kind of uh, questions when we were starting with e-commerce opposing offline and online. I think the same with metaverse. There is not much of an opposition. I think we illustrated very well. It's more how you know the two uh, augment you know themselves and uh, how virtual augment the real, but how the real also can augment you know uh, the virtual. Okay. Um, this uh, extent, uh, there was also a complementary uh, questions. Uh, well, I think uh, this one, Patrice, uh, should be uh, for you. Um, you were describing the metaverse in the first uh, part as uh, growing uh, technology. So in this extent, seeing all the results uh, that are very successful in China, do you think there is actually a limit to the metaverse? Is there one? Or if it exists, uh, what is the, the limit actually that we know about the metaverse? Um, is there a limit to uh, imagination? <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, so the only limit is what we can do. Uh, and, uh, and for now, the limit is technology, but technology is evolving very fast, and we have people who are building <laughs> incredible things. Um, maybe the thing that changed a lot uh, again, and I will go back to AI, is now we have technology that uh, going beyond what, how we conceive them. Uh, I know you have auto-generative code. Uh, you have, you know, uh, algorithm that are auto-generated. Uh, so the limit, which was the limit of the of of the brain, you know, imagining, you know, programming something, uh, is going disrupted by something that we create that have their own self-generation. Uh, and AI is, uh, is very powerful for that. Um, so yes, there is a limit, limit of technology, limit of software, there's limit of um, uh, calculation, computing, uh, and there's always, you know, between a software and computing, at some point we had software which, where um, we didn't have enough uh, cheap power uh, to really run the software that we had or the, 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 the technology that we had into the software. And later, you know, we had so much computer power, but we had less software that could use all that power. And we go back now to such powerful uh, algorithm that we need to go back into working to the hardware uh, to be able to process all this uh, 3D uh, real-time and AI system. So it's always a back and forth, but uh, this is the limit. But the rest is uh, imagination, and I think it's, uh, it's uh, beyond the boundaries, yeah. I think the limits is uh, people. People are <laughs> the regulation are limits. For, for example, the traffic light. Actually, AI have uh, AI can do the um, good traffic light. Uh, people get get annoyed waiting the traffic light, but AI actually can change that. But due to some uh, regulation or the people or the some some business in this traffic light cake <laughs> is hard to push something to the ground. Yeah, so the, the yeah, I think some point is people. Yeah, you're totally right, it's the acceptance. Um, when you look at robotics, uh, because we don't think so much robotics and AI these days, I don't know why, but it's, um, I think it's a big topic. You have a lot of research about uh, human and machine interaction and how you, human, 
being will accept to have a conversation with uh, a piece of metal or a piece of plastic, which is a robot. And there's a lot of designer that design nice faces, big eyes, or you know, like uh, comforting, you know, uh, to to bridge uh, to to bridge that barrier of you know acceptance. Because the technology is there, you can have conversation with uh, with a piece of metal, uh, but we are not fully ready uh, for that. We are not ready to have emotion with a robot or with a bot, right? But uh, eventually, it might happen. Another question online or on site? Can you see the movie Her? Not for, for my part. Not yeah, for. that's uh, totally in my mind right now because it's uh, someone who uh, fall in love with uh, AI, which is just a voice in his ears. Uh, it's quite interesting, the movie. I think it's one of the best movies about the AI in the recent years. Talking about emotions and <laughs> the limits. Here we go. Uh, you need to see the free guy. Uh, I don't know this movie. Yeah, free guy. This okay. hottest is here. Okay. It's next level of her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's her and him, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, we come to the end of this event. Just wanted to thank you again, Patrice, and uh, as well, uh, Stephen, for sharing your insight uh, tonight. Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, as well, Niska, for the, co the moderation of the roundtable, but as well, thank you, Rachel, for the coordination of the working group. Uh, we hope to see you all uh, guys to our future uh, upcoming uh, events. And for the people offline, well, we can uh, further discuss around the glass of wine. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> In real life, of course, yes. Thank you, everyone.